Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to another Godot shader tutorial video. In this video, I'm going to show how to create kind of a flat fire background. So I've been working on my game Wazard, and I've been redoing the art style. And in the, the new spell screen, I wanted to have some sort of a background here to create some contrast. So I wrote this shader that creates kind of like a purple magic flame background that kind of goes um, behind this. You can ignore this here because it's not live yet, even though I can switch between these spells. Um, this data isn't updating, but you get the idea. And I had somebody ask me about how I did it. So I created a simplified, slightly simplified version um, for this tutorial video. So this is going to be the effect that we're going to create. It's kind of like a flat um, background uh, fire. So let's get started. I have a new project here. I have set in the project settings the window to 1280 by 720 just so that it's 16 by 9. I've added a new color rect um, node and I've just named it flat background, flat fire background and saved it. I made sure that its um, anchors are set to full rec so it takes up the whole screen. If we come over here to our material, we can create a new shader material. Uh, that's make sure you have this selected. And we can create a new shader. And we'll just save this. And then if we double click on our shader here, we get our shader editor. I'm gonna scroll to zoom out a bit here so we get a little bit more room for the code. You can also pop this window out. I'm not going to just for the sake of the tutorial. And I'm gonna delete everything but the fragment shader because that's the only one that we're going to need. So the first thing we need to get here is we need to get, uh, we need to allow some parameters to be passed into our shader. And the first two we're gonna do are going to be an animation speed. We'll do uniform float equals animation speed. We'll set this equal to 0 0.5. Now. Uniform, again, just allows the shader to uh, pass, except it, this shouldn't be an equal sign there. Um, it allows us to uh, pass in information to the shader. If we click on our fire background over here again, click on shader parameters, you can see we have an animation speed that we can alter here, and it starts with a default of 0 0.5. So we're now going to create another uniform, which is going to be our... Uh, it's going to be a sampler 2D, which is basically a texture, and it'll be a noise texture. And we'll give it a hint of default black, and we want to enable repeat. Um, actually, let's not enable repeat quite yet, just so I can show you the problem with not enabling repeat. Okay, so now we have our noise texture, and over here we can have this new parameter. So we're going to create a new noise texture. So um, if you click here where it says empty, we can do noise, new noise texture 2D, and then click inside of that. And we can, for the noise, we'll do new fast noise light. Okay. And that will create a new noise texture. And we can click on it. We can actually see our noise here. This is what it's going to look like. You could mess with some properties here, but the default properties are actually going to work just fine for what we need. So now we can come down into our fragment here and we need to get access to our noise texture. So we're going to say vec for noise color equals texture. And then we'll do noise texture UV like this. And then we're going to have uh, just color equals noise color like this. And now you can see our noise texture is being output as the color here. We've got our noise texture over here, it's being output as the color. It's kind of stretched a little bit wide. Um, so what I'm gonna do to fix that is actually come into the noise texture and change the width to be 640 and the height to be 360. And that will just make it so that it is also 16 by nine and um, fits quite well within our 16 by nine background here. Um, that's just kind of like a simple solution to the stretching. There are other 
approaches to solving that problem. Okay. Now, uh, one of the things that I highly recommend doing while you're creating shaders is to create a final color uh, variable essentially. So we'll create a new vector for here. We'll set it, we'll say final color, and we're gonna set it equal to noise color. And then, put a semicolon here, we're gonna output our final color. Now why do I do this? It's because at any point, um, if I make any changes to the final color, I can comment out those changes and I can see each and every step of the process. So let's say like we take our final color, final color and we plus equals vector for 1.0, right? So that's adding, um, it basically makes the whole thing white to do this because we're adding a bunch of color to every single, to the red, the green and the blue values on the color and makes it white. And, but you can see now I can comment this out so I can see what that step does by either, I can hold control K to um, uncomment or comment it. And I can see, oh, if I comment this out, this is what I get. If I comment it back in, this is what I get. And so I can see each and every step along the way by just commenting out each line as we manipulate the final color along the way. And that's very useful for debugging. So there's my debugging tip for shaders. Now, we want this texture to move. Um, that's part of how we're gonna create the animation. And we're going to use the UV property. So right now, the UV is kind of like the position in the texture that we're at, right? So if our color, uh, if we're sampling each pixel, this is the position that we're sampling or which pixel on this texture we're sampling. And so if we add or subtract from this value, it's going to um, move where we're sampling. Now, Godot has a built-in uh, variable called time, which is just how long the shader has been running essentially. And so what we can do is we can create a new vec2 here, and this is going to be called uv. We'll set it equal to vec2. Now for our x, we're just gonna do uv.x. So our x is gonna be the same. But for our y, because we want this to move vertically, we're gonna do uv.y plus time. And then instead of, uh, and let's do a semicolon here, instead of passing in uv here, which is just the default UV as we move through every single pixel, we're gonna do our new UV variable. This is going to add time to the Y value. Now, <laughs> that doesn't look like what we wanted. Well, that's because our noise texture isn't repeating. So let's come up here and we're gonna do comma and set repeat enabled, just like that. Now that it's repeating, you can see that our, since our texture repeats, uh, and we're adding to the y variable by the y uv but with time, it's actually moving along upward like this, okay? So essentially, we're using time to manipulate the y value of the pixel that we're sampling. And then uh, since that is always increasing, it basically moves the texture up. Now we wanna multiply time by our animation speed. That way we can adjust how quickly this is moving up. It looks a little better to have it move up just a tad slower. So one would be real time and 0.5 would be half time. So we're on half time, okay? Now uh, we've got this ugly seam right here, but if we come into our noise texture, we can turn on, turn on seamless. And that removes that ugly seam in our texture. That's a simple fix right there. Now what we need to do is we need to take our uh, texture here and we want the texture to be brighter as it is lower on the screen and darker as it's higher on the screen. And that gradient that we create is part of what's going to create um, the thicker elements of fire down low in our reference. So if you look here, right here, um, right down here, there's more fire and up here it's less and less. That's because 
our texture is actually going to start out really bright and then slowly get darker as it goes up here. Okay. So we can do that by using the UVY value again. So what we're going to say is we're going to say final color dot red, green, blue, because we don't want to manipulate the alpha value of our color. We're just going to manipulate the red, green, and blue values. Final color dot red, green, blue plus equals vec3 and then we're going to do uv dot y minus uh, uh, let's just do uv dot y for now and then semicolon. Okay, so now you can see what's happening here is the UV value goes from zero to one, okay? And so uh, up here at the top, it's going to be zero. And so we're going to be adding zero to our color, which is why it still stays pretty dark. But as we approach the bottom of the canvas, it's going to be adding higher numbers, approaching one until at the very bottom, we're adding one to it. And that will make it perfectly white. So it's taking our, our previous color and it's going to add a value to that color based on where we are in the y axis of the texture of our canvas. So again, if we comment this out, we can see what it looks like without this line. And if we comment it back in, we can see what it looks like with this line. So we can see each step of the way using comments like that. Now, yeah, we'll, we'll do the next step. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we'll say final color dot red, green, blue equals step final color dot red, green, blue. And then we're going to pass in another vector, vector 3, 0 0.5. Okay, what does this, what does this line do? So step takes an input, which is our final color here, and then it returns either 0 or 1 based on this value right here, okay? So in this case, uh, down here, it's going to return zero um, if it's above this value, and one, that's the white, if it's below this value. So it creates this kind of harsh cutoff. Now you could do this with an if statement um, as well. You could say if, Final color dot red, green, blue is less than or equal to final color dot red, green, or less than or equal to vec 3, 0 0.5, right? Then do something like set the color to white versus set the color to black. You could do it with an if statement too. That might make more sense. Um, from a logical standpoint, you wouldn't have to understand this function, but it would be less performant. Um, using if statements and shaders um, slows them down a bit. So this is a little bit more performant. Okay, so the problem with this is that uh, the fire is really high up. So we're going to create a new uniform vector up here. Not vector, we'll just do a float. Uh, for a y offset. We'll set it to 0 0.5 by default. And then down here, when we're adding the uv.y, we're also just going to subtract our y offset from this. And that's going to move our fire down some. And if you comment out this line here, you can see what it does here. So um, if we were to take this out, you can see there's a, it makes a lot more white, it's much brighter. But using that offset, um, it kind of reduces the amount that we're adding to the final color. And that allows us to move the fire up and down using that offset. Okay, so we've got a nice black background with the white here. Um, the last thing we want to do, well, I mean, maybe not the last thing, but the next thing we want to do, we're getting close to the last thing, is we want to invert this. And inverting a color is quite easy. We can just do final color dot red, green, blue equals vec3. And then just set this to 1.0. So that's going to be perfectly white minus 
final, final color dot red, green, blue. And that, then semicolon here. And that inverts the color. So now we've got white fire down here, black up here. Lastly, we can set the alpha. And we can just do this by saying final color dot alpha equals final color dot red. So what that does is it just says whatever the red value is, um, make that our alpha. So in the white, the red value is going to be one, so fully visible. In the black, the red value is going to be zero, so fully transparent. That allows us to make that transparent. Okay, so we're looking pretty good here. We've got our shader, we've got our fire. Um, we could go through and one at a time comment out each line to, to debug this and see which things make which changes. And that way we're not, that's a very drastic change using this step here, isn't it? Okay, uh, lastly, we're going to set our flame color. So we're gonna create a new uniform. Uniform flame color. We're gonna set this equal to source color equals vec or 1.0. So by default, our source color is going to be uh, uniform vec4, there we go. Uniform vec4, flame color, uh, and then down here, uh, all we're gonna do is we're just gonna say final color dot red, green, blue equals flame color dot red, green, blue. Now, uh, now that we've gone through all those steps, we should be able to just manipulate this right here, make it red, maybe go to orange a bit, lighten it up a tad. You can see we can manipulate the color in the editor right here inside of our shader. We can also manipulate our animation speed, make it much slower. We could manipulate our offset, make it higher or lower, like that. Set it to 0 0.6, that looks pretty good. I like 0.5 for the animation speed the most. And that's it. Now you could probably do this shader in less steps than what I've shown here, but hopefully breaking it up into this many steps um, is helpful for you to be able to see the process um, behind each step, right? It doesn't have to be broken up. We could do multiple steps in a single line of code, for example. But I think it's helpful to see each step individually and to be able to comment them out. So that's gonna be it for this video. I hope it was helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next tutorial.